Who's feeling lucky tonight? Yeah. I know I'm feeling lucky, and you all should be too. I mean, think about it. You're really lucky to be here. And not just because you get to listen to me talk for a little bit, but think about all that you've had to do your entire life. Every single step along the way has happened to, had to happen exactly the right way to get you here this evening. That's pretty impressive. Congratulations. And it's not just about you guys, of course. It's, you know, all the prior generations. Your parents, you know, they had to meet. And then they had to fall in love. And then they had to have sex right at that right time, right? Did I go too far making you picture your parents having sex? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not actually, you're right. <laughs> but you're all very lucky. <clears throat> and I've been thinking about luck for a long time. It started back when I was in college, back at Syracuse University. I had a really good life. I was loving being at school. I had my whole future in front of me, right? God knows what I'm going to do. It's senior year. Everything's good. It was this wonderful October morning, just like the one that we had here in Jackson Hole, sunny and beautiful outside. And my sister was with her fiance, and they were on their way to work this morning, and another driver on their way to work ran a red light and smashed into their car. And my sister was killed instantly. That was 20 years ago, today. And I was 21 years old at the time. This, by the way, is her favorite spoon. <laughs> I guess it was my favorite spoon, too. We used to fight over it a lot. I don't know why. It's got a funny little thing on the end or something. <laughs> but I keep this with me a lot. <clears throat> I take it with me a lot of places I go. I, I brought it to the top of the Grand Teton. And, Anyway, I was 21 when it happened, when she died. And I didn't know how to process any of those emotions. I do remember being at her funeral and thinking to myself, why her and not me? I mean, she was young and about to be married, about to start a family, about to start her career as an elementary school teacher. And I was just pissing away my parents' money at getting a degree in geography that I have yet to use. <laughs> I decided the best thing for me was to bottle up those emotions. Just bottle them up. They didn't matter. So that's what I did. And you know what? It worked. Yep. I started having fun again, and life was good. Moved out west, moved out to Colorado. Everything was just, I've been so fortunate. Things are just so great in my life. Of course, caught up to me. All those emotions came flooding back one day. It was about a year and a half later. I was in Boulder, Colorado. It was a powder day up at Eldora. Snowing up on the mountains, raining down in town. I'm like, all right, I'm getting up there. I'm getting some first tracks. Hop in my Jeep. I Head up Boulder Canyon, it was raining in town, as I said, and snowing up top, so, you know, I should have known mountain people, right, that there's going to be black ice. About halfway up, my car just starts spinning clockwise, and I can't control it. I look over, and I see the tree coming right at me, and wham! The tree hits the side of my car, right on the driver's side. Very similar in the accident to my sister, except she was in the passenger seat. When the paramedics came, I had somehow gotten myself out of the car. I was in shock. I don't remember that part. And they asked me, like, who's the driver? Where did he go? And I'm like, I'm the driver. And they said, you should be dead. As you'll notice in these pictures, the driver's seat is pretty much entirely gone. The steering wheel was bent perpendicular. The only thing that saved my life was the fact that I had a split second to see it all happening. And I saw that tree coming and I ducked into the passenger seat. Now I had a lot of time to think while I was in the hospital. I broke my hip, I had a lot of internal bleeding. 
And of course, these emotions came back and that question, why her? Why her and not me? Why was I given that chance, that split, split second? She wasn't. It just didn't make any sense. I was only 23 at the time, so, of course, still being emotionally an idiot, I bottled those emotions back up again. And I, I'm good at it. I put that wall up and went on with my life, and things got good again. I moved to Jackson, became like the ski bum I'd always dreamed of, <laughs> that I'm sure my parents dreamed for me too. <laughs> and I was loving it, life up here. And I, I get a call one day about my, co my cousin, Ryder, down in Colorado. That night he'd been coming home from work. A deer jumped out in front of his car. He swerved off the road, rolled. You know how it ends. He left behind a beautiful wife and two really young children. Here I am, a ski bum in Jackson Hole. I go down to that funeral and I cried at that funeral. I cried because I kept thinking, why him, not me? Why them, not me? Why Deb, not me? It just didn't seem fair. It still doesn't seem fair. I did a lot of soul searching after that for a bunch of years constantly thinking of that question. I started to wonder, what is luck anyway? Why am I lucky? What is luck? Do I even care? Is it fate? Is everything that happens to all of us just chance? And I know it can't be that because I know too many good people in my life and too many great experiences that I know led to each other. It's not just chance. Is it karma, the idea that if we do good things, good things happen to us and vice versa? That couldn't be the case, right? Deb and Ryder had built up way more good karma than I had, but I was still here. It all hit me, finally, like a ton of bricks. The day my daughter was born. Like so many of you parents in the audience today, you know what it was like when your kids were born. A flood of emotions that just comes over you, can't even describe it, you don't know what they are. It's love, it's fear, it's excitement, it's whatever, it's just something. And I sat there in the recovery room all by myself with Fiona. And I cried because I, I finally figured it out. I've been asking myself the wrong question my whole life. It doesn't matter why I'm lucky. Why is not the question. It's what. What am I going to do with this luck? I've got a responsibility with this luck. I'm here. She's here. I've got a responsibility. We all have a responsibility with that luck. Think about all the people in your lives that have done something for you in your lives, your family, your friends, your coworkers, your teachers, your mentors, they've all done something. Maybe it's they gave you a little bit of money or a little bit of their time or a little advice at just the right moment. They gave you some of their luck. Funny thing is, Fiona, she gets it already. She doesn't even know it. Every day that I see her smile, or she gives me a hug, or even those mornings when, she wait, when I have to wake her up and she's really pissed, and she looks at me like, Dad, go away, and covers herself up and gives me a grumpy face. I just stand back and think, I'm so lucky to have you. I see Deb's eyes in her eyes. I want you all to know that luck 
is perpetual. You don't have to ask why. You don't have to ask why. You just have to know what. What are you going to do with that luck? When you leave here today, think of those people in your life and share the luck. <laughs>